Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be looking at some problems involving static friction. So static friction, of course, is very similar to kinetic friction, but there's a couple of key differences. So first, here's the equation for static friction. There's two equations I'm going to show you. The first one is Fs is less than or equal to mu s times Fn, the normal force. So Fs here is the static friction force. Mu s is the coefficient of static friction and Fn, the normal force, the same normal force we talked about in other videos. Now, the weirdest thing about this equation is the, the less than or equal to sign. And the reason why that's there is because imagine you're trying to push like something heavy, like a wardrobe or your bed or a couch or a grill, and it's not moving. Even if you push it a little bit harder, it still doesn't move. It's not until you give an overwhelming amount of force that it actually starts moving. And the reason for that is because of the less than or equal to sign. Meaning, if you don't reach the threshold of getting it to move, the static friction is going to be less than this equation. The only time you get to write equal to is if we're talking about the max static friction, meaning I push any harder and now it's going to start moving. This is when I get to use equal to equals to mu s times fn. And they're going to give some word in the problem like minimum force needed or maximum force needed or minimum distance, maximum distance. There's going to be some wording in the question that's basically cluing you in that you're supposed to use this equation. And if it's not the max and you need to use the top one, first of all, you, you can't use the top equation. It's, it's not really an equation. What you have to do in the top circumstance when you're not talking about the maximum is you just need to use Newton's second law. It's actually the exact same thing we did to find the normal force. We use Newton's second law and we solve it that way. And we're gonna look at an example of that today. So let's go ahead and get started. The first example I have today, it's a good one. I have a box on a ramp. This ramp is pretty shallow. It's not very steep. We'll say it's 15 degrees. And I have a mass where M equals six kilograms. And at this moment right here, the box is at rest due to static friction. And my question is, I want you to find the static friction force, Fs. So how are we gonna do this? Well, the first thing we need to figure out is, are we using that equation we said where it's the maximum or not the maximum? And if I look at this question, there's no words to me suggesting that is the maximum. It would have to say like the maximum angle of the ramp before it starts falling or sliding. So since this is not the maximum, I just have to use Newton's second law. If you remember for ramp problems, we do have a secret before I even get started with Newton's second law. First, I draw the free body diagram. In this case, I have gravity, mg, pointing down. I've got a normal force, fn, pointing perpendicular to the ramp. And then the only other force is I have static friction. Maybe you don't know which way that points. I'll tell you, friction always wants to oppose motion. Which way does this box wanna go? It wants to go down the ramp. So friction's gonna point the opposite direction, up the ramp, and we're gonna call this Fs. Then the secret that I do for any ramp problem is I like to rotate it so that now it's on a flat surface where now normal force is gonna point straight up, friction force is gonna point straight to the left, and then the gravity doesn't point straight down anymore. Now it kind of points down and at an angle. And you need to remember where the 15 degree angle goes. It always goes between the imaginary vertical line going down the center. So 15 degrees goes right there. So one more thing before we use Newton's second law, we really should break this mg into its x and y components. The way we do that is by constructing a right triangle, which I'll do right over here. So we know the hypotenuse is mg. We know the angle is 15 degrees and I wanna find the Y component and the X component of this force. Since the X component is the opposite leg, it is going to get sine 15. In other words, sine 15 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. If I wanna solve for X, X equals M times G times the sine of 15 degrees. We can plug this in a calculator because the mass is six and G is 9.8. 
and that will give us 15.2 newtons. Now for the y, it's going to be extremely similar. y is the adjacent leg, so it's just going to be cosine. In other words, y equals mg cosine of 15 degrees. And if I plug that in my calculator, where again, mass is 6, g is 9.8, then I'm going to get 56.8, and the units are newtons. So now that I have the x and y components, one thing you can do is you can redraw the free body diagram because normal force points up, the y component points down, 56.8, the x component points to the right at 15.2 newtons, and the only force pointing to the left is now Fs. So if I want to solve for static friction force, and I'm using Newton's second law, it makes sense to use F net x here because static friction's in the x direction. So in other words, I would say F net x is equal to all the forces to the right, 15.2 minus the forces to the left minus fs and I set that equal to mass times acceleration. Now we remember that this box is not moving in other words the acceleration is zero and so that's great because it means I can add fs to both sides and 15.2 equals fs there. I have my static friction force it's 15.2 newtons final answer I didn't even need the coefficient of static friction nor do I know it right now. I, I have no idea what it is, but it doesn't matter. The answer is 15.2 newtons. And so that's it for this first one. Now I just have one more example I want to look at. This one is going to be harder, I'll just warn you. So for this one, I'm going to imagine that I have a truck that looks something like this in a truck kind of shape with some cargo in the back, and that's going to have a mass of, let's say, 10 kilograms. The truck is initially moving with a speed of 16 meters per second when it comes across a stop sign over here. And we want to stop this truck at the stop sign without the cargo in the back slipping. I do not want the crate to slip. There is going to be some friction in this problem. I'm going to give you mu s, the coefficient of static friction, as 0.6, and I'll give you mu k the coefficient of kinetic friction as 0.45. And my question is going to be, I want to find the minimum stopping distance. Okay, and you can try this on your own first if you want. This is a pretty difficult problem. So if you want to see the solution, here it is. First, I think it's a good idea to draw my free body diagram for the cargo on the back. I actually don't really care about the truck too much at all. I don't have the mass of the truck, so it's going to be impossible to, to do anything with the truck. So really focusing on the cargo. And that's going to have gravity going down, mg. We're going to have a normal force pointing up, fn. And then the toughest thing is the friction force. Because we know that static friction is going to go the opposite way we expect. But we also know that this is pretty complex because we're on the back of a truck and the truck is already a moving object. So which way will friction point? And so here's what you should think about when trying to determine this. When I slam on the brakes, which way does the crate want to go? It wants to go forward, right? Because when you slam on the brakes, it's going to want to go forward. So to stop that from happening, static friction points the opposite way to the left. And I'm calling this FS because it is static friction. I don't want to be slipping. And these are the only forces acting on the object. I don't need to rotate it because it's not a ramp. So I can go straight into Newton's second law. So I'm going to be focusing on the x direction because that's where friction's going. If I write F net x, it's equal to the force is going to the right, which there is none, minus the force is going to the left. So minus Fs is equal to mass times acceleration. So I have the mass, I don't have the acceleration, and I also don't have the static friction force this time. The good news is I can use this max static friction force equation, and the reason why is because they're asking me for the minimum stopping distance, which means I need the max static friction. So mu s they give me, it's 0.6. As a matter of fact, you won't even need the 0.45 for this problem. I gave it there to confuse you, but we don't need it. So we have the 0.6, now we just need the normal force. If I want to find the normal force, I'm looking at f net in the y direction. I see one force going up fn, I see one force going down mg, the crate's not moving up or down. Long story short, normal force equals mg. So f 
n equals mg. And we also know the mass is 10 and g is 9.8. So in other words, the normal force is equal to 98 newtons. And that's exactly what I'm gonna put right here for Fn. So plugging that in a calculator, we get 58.8 newtons. And that is the max static friction force, which I can now plug back in to F net X. So in other words, negative 58.8 is equal to mass times acceleration. We know that mass is 10, so 10 goes right here, times acceleration. Divide both sides by 10, and we get acceleration equals negative 5.88, and that's meters per second squared. You'll notice we're not done the problem yet because I wanted to solve for stopping distance and I only found acceleration. So hopefully you realize that if we just found acceleration and we want to solve for distance, it's probably going to come down to kinematics, which it does. So now with kinematics, I write down my five kinematic variables, V initial, V final, acceleration, time, and displacement delta x. V initial is the initial speed of the truck, which is 16. V final is zero because we're coming to a stop. Acceleration we just found to be negative 5.88. Time we have no idea, nor do we care. And delta x is what we're solving for. So which kinematic equation am I gonna use? I am gonna use the one that doesn't have time in it, which is the squared one. V final squared equals V initial squared plus two a delta x. So in other words, zero squared equals 16 squared plus two times negative 5.88 times delta x. So simplifying this a little bit, 16 squared is 256, and then minus two times 5.88, 11.76 delta x. Add the 11.76 delta x to both sides, giving us this, and then I just have to divide both sides by 11.76. And we'll get a final answer of 21.8 and that's meters. And so if I stop any less than that, like 20 meters, 15 meters, then the cargo is gonna to start to slip. And that's all the example problems I have for today on static friction. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.